Now you've spoken to me a little bit about the value of this worldview training in education. And we've got a small school here and it's definitely something that has grabbed my heart a few years ago and this training's only really opened my eyes more to the value of that with children, young adults, uh, well, teenagers, but also young adults, I suppose, in the college setting. So tell me about your passion there and why you think it's so effective with the next generation. Well, I think um, because the culture is rebooting itself so quickly, yep. we need to have people that are light on their feet yes. to, when it comes to the way they think and live. And uh, getting involved in the lives of teachers, particularly teachers in Christian schools, to, um, to be able to uh, take this program and they begin to implement it within what they do as teaching. I hear mm -hmm. from, uh, over the years, I've heard from headmasters, superintendents of Christian schools, and they say this, we proclaim that we teach from a biblical worldview, we have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, we're yeah. teaching Bible. Yes. And that's not the biblical worldview. Yeah. And so how do we equip our kids to make a difference in this culture? How do we equip our kids just to make it through this culture? Yes. To be able to discern, to choose that which is good, and to get rid of that which isn't, yeah. for them to band together and to be accountable to one another. Mm -hmm. And what the Colson Fellows Program does is it equips the teachers to mm -hmm. have substance conversations with the kids and to be able to help guide them. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they're the most influential. And the same thing with parents. It helps yeah. parents do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so the schools that are doing it now are just just thrilled. I mm. mean, it's just transformed the way they are interacting with their students, transformed with the way that they're doing doing worldview, yeah. you know, and uh, it, I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Because you've got some uh, actual whole faculties in schools going through the mm. Colson Fellows mm. together, mm. haven't you? We do. And that mm. must have a big impact to have a not just one teacher or one principal, or, but to have a group go through and really group go embrace through, yeah. this. Most of the schools have uh, part of their faculty going through. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, uh, let's say they have 12, and they have, let's say they have 50 faculty, they have 12 going through. Next year, 12 more will go through, and mm -hmm. the 12 that just went through will mentor them. Yeah, okay. And that's like you, you and Zoe are mentoring. You learn a lot by mentoring. Yes. Because you go through the program again, more or less. Yeah. And it kind of reinforces for you, but having to articulate it to somebody else that's learning it, yeah. it just, it's a good too. And um, so th that is making a change in a lot of really premier Christian schools in America. And I think you've touched on the, the gold there. It's not just teaching the Bible or having a chapel service or something like that in a Christian school environment, but actually doing the worldview thinking and inter is, is interactive. It, there's a dialogue. It's actually pulling apart LGBT and climate change mm -hmm. and suicide, like I was talking about before, why are these things happening? Why do people get to these places? Is this truth or not? Right. And, yeah. and I think I look at my school, I had Christian schooling, Christian youth group, church, family, it was brilliant. But the one thing I didn't have is someone there going, what are your wrestles, Caleb? What are mm -hmm. your doubts like? Mm -hmm. What, what, why do you feel influenced by your non-Christian friends? What's happening there at a worldview, belief level? Right. Is it the truth? Is it not? And a few well-placed questions or some opportunities like that at 15, 16, 17 would have done a world of good for me. I'm lucky I did get through, but most of my friends walked away from Christianity because I suppose, and we had Mark Jury here this week, and he said because of the cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I thought that that's why all my friends left Christianity because they couldn't reconcile maybe some passions inside of them that weren't healthy with their Christian faith, or they saw friends doing things, or maybe they saw some hypocrisy in their parents or whatever, and, but they couldn't put the two together. We're meant to live like this and believe this in the Bible like Jesus, but then there's these other things going on. And I think some dialogues some trainings and worldview would have really, that would have helped a lot. Yeah. And I know a lot of Christian schools in Australia want to head in this direction. I'm just not sure how far yeah. they're getting. I hope that encourages you today. If you can, like this video, share this video, subscribe, do anything you can to help us get the message out. We want more people to know the goodness of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless you.